greetings. Uh, this is Mus, and I'm going to do a very simple beginner tutorial on how to model and texture a chess piece in Blender. I'm using Blender 3.4, and you can download the latest version on Blender.org. All right, so let's begin. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click here and go to the image editor, this one right here. I'm going to click image, open, and I have an image of a chess piece that I've uh, saved on my PC. I'll just use that as a reference. So let's delete the default cube. I hit X and then select delete. I'm going to try to go as uh, slowly and as uh, as uh, carefully as possible just so that you guys can follow along if you feel like uh, you want to otherwise just uh, enjoy the music and enjoy the modeling um, I'm gonna select these two press M move it to new collection and call it uh, set Let's also bring out another window and and uh, set it to the outliner so I have something to view here. Now let's hide the camera and the lights for now from here and add a cylinder shift A, select mesh, go down here and I add a cylinder with the cylinder select, oops. Let me redo that. I shift A, add mesh, add a cylinder. This panel opens up down here, and I'm going to make change it so that the vertices on this are 48. Why not? I'm going to change its radius to 0 0.75 meters, and I'm going to change the depth to 2.5 meters generate UV pieces on and now once I move this that panel vanishes I left click the cylinder and I press G for grab Z to move it on the Z axis and one and that's it in place I press one to go into front view and scroll up to uh, zoom in let's bring it up right about here so that's even with the floor i'm going to right click shade smooth you see this shading error issue that's happening right here the easy the, the way to fix this is to go to object data properties this little green icon over here and then go into normals and click auto smooth you can obviously change the angle over here but i'm going to leave it at 30. all right so what we're going to do is we're also going to bring in an image a reference image and i'll that brought that in so I'll scale it down by pressing S, dragging my mouse and left clicking to confirm. I'm also going to go up here and toggle X-ray and turn it on. Now I select the image by left clicking again, scale it up right about there and move it up just like that. Let's uh, also bring the image just back just a little bit, just like that. G, Y, and then drag to move it along the Y axis, the green Y axis. The red one is the X axis. And the one you can't see, unless I enable it over here, is the Z axis, which is vertical as opposed to the uh, horizontal x and y axes so now that we have this let's uh, select x 
X-ray mode is still on over here. The shortcut for that is Alt-C. So if I press Alt-C, you can see how I go into X-ray mode. Let's uh, select this, our cylinder, and then scale it down just a little. All right. Bring it down right here. And then I'm going to press tab to go into edit mode. Three to go to face selection. You see this little small dot over here? This one dot right here. I'm gonna click that. Selects the top face when I'm in the X-ray mode. I'm gonna press G and it moves. I'm gonna press Z to lock it to the Z axis and I'm gonna bring it down right here. Just like that. All right, so you can also find all these tools over here. Move, rotate, scale, transform, annotate, measure. There's a lot, there's a few to go into. It's, it's not that complicated once you start using Blender. Um, what I'm going to use is the loop cut tool, which is this one right here. And you can see the hotkey for that is Control R. So I'm going to use the loop cut, Control R, and hover over my cylinder. And you see that yellow loop cut right there. I'm going to left click to place it. And then just like that, I'm going to bring it right here. So as you can see now, we have a loop cut over here. Right, I'm going to use this opportunity to also add another loop cut right here. And we'll start from the base and work our way upwards. So now I press 2 to go into edge select mode, which lets you select all these edges like so. And 1 lets you go into vertex select mode which lets you work on individual vertices, right? All right, so let's see. I'm gonna press, press two to go into edge select mode. Select this vertex, uh, this uh, loop cut. Press one to go into front view. And I'm going to press control and B to bevel it. Just like that. With that done, now we have two loop cuts in this place. You can see all the many, all the options for the bevel. I've left it at one segment and everything else you can leave as default. I'm going to press two again to ensure that I'm in uh, edge select mode. I'm going to press double click or alt click to select this loop right here, the upper loop, and press S to scale it in. Just like that. Next, I'm going to select this loop. I'm going to press Control B to bevel, just so that it's at the outline. And with both loops selected, not changing anything, I'm going to press S to scale it in until it's like that. And I'm going to add a loop cut here so that this region doesn't move. I'm going to select double click or to select this loop again. Press S to scale and bring it in right about there. And then the upper loop, I'm going to select that and press S to scale and bring it in. Just like that. All right, let's add another loop cut. You guessed it. And bring it right about here. Press S to scale and bring it in.
Let's add another loop cut, control R. Bring it right about here. Just really close to the other loop. Since we want a uh, sharp uh, a plateau here. S to scale. Bring it in right there. Add another loop cut. G, G, so G twice to move it and align it with this line over here. S to scale. And just like that. So here's what I'm gonna do. Okay, actually I'm gonna keep it simple. Uh, let's add another loop cut, loop, loop cut here. Bring it down just like that to this line. Really close to this line. Press S to scale, just like that, and left click to confirm. Adding one more loop cut right in the middle over here. S to scale, bring it in. All right, now I'm going to press 3 to go into face selection mode. Select this face, and S to scale. Bring it in just like that. You see how that this shape is uh, shaping out to be? If I press Alt Z, go into this, maybe even this, and select a. Alright, we're close to uh, finishing this, so let's carry on with that, shall we? Um, I'm going to press Alt Z to go into X ray mode again, press 1 to go into front view. Press tab to go into edit mode. You see how right in the middle here, these indents have uh, have uh, we need we need something that supports this this mesh so that nothing below this line. If we add another loop cut here, nothing below this line goes into uh, goes below. All right, but before that, we're gonna do one more thing. I'm going to press Alt-Z to go out of uh, X-Ray mode, press 7, press 3, 7 takes me to the top view, and click the top face over here. I'm going to press I to inset, just like that, and then I'm going to press E to extrude, and it will automatically lock it to the Z-axis, and we can extrude it downwards, just like that, and there we go. Right. So, what are we going to do next? All we need to do is these little, uh, this crown shape over here. And uh, I like how there's like three on the front and, excuse me, and, and this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna press this, select these three edges press F to fill. Select this loop and this loop. Control select to deselect those. Just this inside loop. Press F to fill. Then I'm going to select this and this and this and press F to fill. Just like that. Same thing with these. I'm just going to press this. I'm just going to double click on this loop over here. I'm going to shift select this loop, press F to fill, select this, press F to fill, select these edges, press F to fill. Same thing for here, F to fill, select these edges, F to fill, select these edges, F to fill, select Left click here, control left click over here, select this, F to fill, select these edges, F to fill, select these edges, F to fill, click, and then control kick to here, control shift, and then shift click to these edges, 
left fill. If you hold shift and click, another edge can also be selected. So like this, F to fill. There we have it. Now let's just work on the um, this curve here a little bit. First thing I want to do is if I press Alt Z, you can see how this is sort of sloping outwards, whereas this isn't. So let's add a loop cut over here. Scale it up. Then select this loop. Move it up a little bit and scale it inwards. Select this loop. Create another loop. Scale it up just a little. And there you go. That looks a lot more like the reference. So we can even add a little bit of curvature here. If I control R to create a loop cut. And then S. Scale it just a little bit. There you go. All right. Mm. I'm also going to do one more thing. I'm going to double click to select this loop, then press Control B, B as in Bravo, to bevel this loop. Now, now I'm going to drag my mouse, and you can see there are two levels of one level. There is one level of bevel, so the line is being divided two times. So let's scroll my mouse wheel up one more time so scroll my mouse wheel up twice and i think i'll like it over here and there you go now there's four loop cuts here all going in a beveled uh, shape hmm. also i think i'm going to move this up just a little bit so select that loop gz i'm holding down shift to move it in lesser increments and just like that that's done all right so congratulations we're done no i'm just kidding uh, the model is we've made the model we have like this crown shape up here and now we're going to do some shading yay so we're going to use procedural uh, textures, procedural materials to make a texture for this chess piece. So this is, I haven't, so this is going to be a simple one. First, I'm going to, what I'm going to do is open the shader editor and, oops. And I'm going to move this window just like that. I'm going to make a new material and I'm going to call it chess piece. Let's start off by pressing shift A, texture, noise texture holding it right here oh very important before we do this go into your uh, render properties in render engine change it to cycles select the device to GPU compute and we can also bring down the samples to something like 2048 or even too far and we can do denoising for both render and oh, viewport. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to select render and view. I'm going to unhide the lamp and the camera. Go to the light. Set it to 4. Change this to a sun lamp. And press 7. Just click and drag this, so it's like this. Now we have some nice shadows there. 
I'm going to select the camera, press Alt G, Alt R, go to side view, by 3, pressing 3. I'm going to press RX 90. <coughs> Sorry, let me do that again. Uh, RX 90. And I'm going to press it, move it right here. And I'm going to open a new window here. I'm going to press, hover over this window and press 0. Right. I'm going to obviously go into that. We can obviously hide the render reference here. And I'm going to move my camera back just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little more. And move it up a little bit. There we go. Alright, sorry if I was going too fast, but G is for moving. You can lock how you move the camera or any item along different axes axes so G is for grab and then I pressed G Y to move it backwards and G Z to move it upwards over here all right actually I think I'm gonna press R to rotate like this since I'm in side view it's gonna rotate along the x-axis and then I'm gonna press G and Z Bring it up right here okay so now that that's set up, I want the camera's focal length to be something like 80. And then adjust the camera accordingly. Just like that. Make sure your object is centered in this case. And. Alright. Let's, this might be a good time to rename this collection to chess piece. And now I click on the chess piece and you can see I've already made the material or I mean, I created a new material for this already. So very important, go to edit, preferences, add-ons, and in this search bar over here, right, node wrangler and you can see I have this enabled once you enable this you'll have certain options that make it easier to work with nodes these include hotkeys and shortcuts so let's just work on the material for now so let's control shift left click with node wrangler enabled to see what this noise texture does Zoom in on this, and you can see how the rook is all the chess piece is all the, has noise on it, right? Let's change the scale of this to 10. Oh, that looks good. The detail I'm gonna bring up. And the roughness, I'm just going to play with the slider just a little bit to see what looks good. Distortion obviously distorts the uh, texture. You can go negative with this as well. I'm going to set it back to zero. I'm going to set the roughness to 0.6. Alright. Let's uh, press Ctrl and T while the noise texture is selected to add a mapping node and texture coordinate node. And we're gonna change this from generated to object, just like that. Let's rearrange this just a little bit. Uh, I think a scale of five is looking really good. Okay, now if I add, press Shift A, go to Converter, and add a color ramp in between this, you can see that if I play with the sliders here, it gives 
a different look to the noise, right? It fades in and out the noise of the various colors. So I want it to be kind of sharp. So I'm going to bring these two sliders together just like this, just a little bit so that there's less contrast between these two. All right. So I'm going to move this back a little bit. And let's say this is a white piece. So we don't really need to change the colors there. You can change the colors of the uh, color ramp over here. Now I'm going to, this is a very simple setup. I'm just going to plug this into the base color and then control shift left click this node. And that's, there you go. Now, chess pieces are usually really smooth and this marble rook look I think is good for this uh, particular texture. But let me see if I can add just a little bit of bump to it. Just a little bit of a, uh, actually we'll do that later. Let's bring the specular up just a little bit so it looks like it's that ivory sort of material and then we're going to bring the roughness down since to give it even more of an ivory sort of look you can see how it's getting more and more shiny so I'm going to just set it to 0 0.2 here we can get rid of the sheen tint and Maybe give this slightly yellowish subsurface color. And so, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to search for a bump node and just let me let me show that slowly. I'm going to go Shift A vector. put it right here. I'm going to hook the normal into the normal right here. And I'm going to take the factor and plug this into the height. Oh, that and see how that's really strong and it gives it a bump. This is this is the mesh hasn't been changed at all. This is just a um, uh, a bump effect. So, let's what we can do is we can bring the distance down to make this more or less pronounced. So if I set it to 0 0.1, you see what that does. If I set it to 0 0.01, see what that does. And it's just a subtle effect, but you can see right here, there's a bump effect now, which is kind of nice. Um, it might not be really realistic, but oh, we're gonna go with it and just use this. Uh, another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the Y scale and just bring it up to four, just like that. And you see how that's stretching it on the Y axis. That's what we want in this situation and just maybe move the X scale just a little bit. Just, yeah, just, to, all right, that's good. Um, so that's the material for the chess piece. It's really simple. It's just one noise texture. We have a texture coordinate and mapping node plugged into a noise texture, which is plugged into a color ramp, which goes into the base color. And then this also drives the bump. And then we have this effect right here. So let's just, mm, I don't know, let's give it a background. So let's give it a backdrop. So just a white backdrop, I guess. Add a plane, scale it up. Press tab.
and then let's just give it a simple black color with no specular just a little bit of specularity shade this mode and make it kind of rough and there you go that's backdrop and I'm going to uh, put an image of the render of the chess piece right now. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. I hope, I hope you have a great day. I'll see you next time.